Hi, we're Group 42, and our project is on deep joint source channel coding for image transmission over wireless channels. To motivate this problem, we first describe how a conventional communication system is built. A conventional communication system is built primarily on the Shannon separation theorem, which states that the separate optimization of source and channel coding is optimal for point-to-point -point communication over a static channel. What that means is that the source encoder will attempt to first reduce the redundancy in the source information before the channel encoder strategically adds the redundancy back in to protect the message over a noisy channel. This type of systems are highly popular because of the modularity that it provides and we have highly efficient compression and channel codes that exist. However, this type of design fails in several applications first of which is live video broadcasting. When a single transmitter is trying to communicate with multiple receivers, it must accommodate the receiver with the worst channel quality, therefore sacrificing the image quality of receivers with better channels. Another example is mobile video streaming. You must have experienced, when watching YouTube on your phone in a moving vehicle, that it tends to load a lot. And that's because the source and channel encoders have to constantly accommodate for the changing channel conditions that you're experiencing while on the move. Therefore, this leads to what we call the cliff effect. The cliff effect occurs when the channel condition falls below the target for which the channel and source encoders were optimized for. And when that happens, the image quality will fall suddenly because the signal is completely undecodable. The solution to this is called joint source channel coding, which combines the source and channel encoders to attempt to replicate the behavior of analog signals, which degrades the image quality gradually as the channel quality gets worse. So in this project, we will use deep neural networks to design a joint source channel coding scheme for wireless image transmission. The idea is to use convolutional recurrent neural networks to parameterize the joint source channel encoder and decoder. And we will use a deep learning technique called autoencoding, which essentially tries to replicate the input at the output through a bottleneck layer, which is our channel, under the constraint of bandwidth and power. Our neural network architecture is built primarily on convolutional recurrent neural networks. The idea is to use the recurrent neural network's state memory to better capture features in images and remember them to use for images that are not seen before. As you can see here in the encoder, we use a series of convolutional LSTMs and with filter size 3x3 stride 2 to successively reduce the dimensionality of the input image, thereby accomplishing the task of compression. At the decoder, we use also convolutional LSTMs, but combined with depth to space nodes that trade depth for space so that we can successively expand the received signal and achieve the task of decompression. During training, we use the mean squared error loss metric because we measure our image quality using the peak signal to noise ratio metric, which has an inverse relationship with the mean squared error of the image. So as we're reducing the mean squared error, we are thereby increasing the peak signal to noise ratio of the image. We also measure the channel condition using the channel signal to noise ratio metric, and we normalize the transmitted signal to satisfy the power constraint. We compare our design with two competing schemes, first of which is another deep joint source channel coding design, but based entirely on convolutional neural networks. We hope that with our additional recurrent component, we can offer superior performance to the competition. The second competing scheme we'll consider is the separate source and channel coding design using JPEG compression and capacity achieving codes. The Shannon separation theorem actually states the maximum number of bits per source sample that can be communicated reliably is equal to k over n times c, where k is the channel bandwidth n is the source bandwidth, and c is the capacity of the channel. We pick the highest compression quality that is allowable by JPEG compression that is just below the maximum rate defined by this equation. And for all rates below the maximum JPEG compression, we reconstruct the image using the mean of the pixels. 
To train the neural networks, we use the CIFAR-10 image dataset, which contains 50,000 training images of size 32 by 32 by 3. There is an additional 10,000 images of the same size for testing. We train each model with a different channel SNR and bandwidth constraint K, and test each model over a range of channel SNR values. Here we show some results for different models being trained under different channel SNR and bandwidth constraints. You can see from this plot, the separate source and channel coding design with JPEG compression performs very poorly, apart from the highest bandwidth constraint and the highest channel SNR value. Indeed, with K equals 2000 and CSNR equals 20 dB, the separate source and channel coding design with JPEG compression can indeed outperform the joint source channel coding designs. However, for all other values, we see that the joint source channel coding designs can outperform JPEG very significantly. If we just focus on the joint source channel coding designs, we see that both architectures improve the PSNR of the reconstructed image with increasing bandwidth and increasing CSNR train. However, more importantly, we see that the convolutional recurrent neural network design that we proposed performs significantly better than the purely CNN design due to its superior compression capability. Here we observe the behavior of each model over a range of channel conditions with channel bandwidth constraint 2000 symbols. We see that the separate source and channel coding design with JPEG compression can indeed offer superior performance, but only at the highest channel SNR values. For all channel SNR values below 22 dB, the JPEG algorithm is unable to compress the image sufficiently to meet the maximum communication rate of the channel. Therefore, it reconstructs the image using the mean of the pixels, leading to the cliff effect that we see here. And this is not a problem with the joint source channel coding designs, as they show a graceful degradation of image quality as the channel quality worsens. If we study just the joint source channel coding designs, we see that both architectures can successfully avoid the cliff effect that we see with separate source and channel coding. Moreover, our recurrent convolutional neural network design performs significantly better than the solely convolutional design of our competition. This is fundamentally due to the superior compression capability of the recurrent convolutional neural network in our proposed architecture. Moreover, we see that there is an inherent trade-off between the training SNR and the testing SNR. That is, if we train the network on a high CSNR, then it suffers when it is tested at a low CSNR. Likewise, if the network was trained at a low CSNR, then it suffers when it is tested at a high CSNR. Here we present some sample input and output images for a model that was trained and tested at CSNR equals 10 dB and K equals 1000 symbols. We see that the image can be pretty accurately reconstructed at the output. And recall that this is a regime where the separate source and channel coding using JPEG compression was unable to communicate reliably. In conclusion, we successfully designed a deep joint source channel coding algorithm for wireless image transmission using recurrent convolutional neural networks. We can avoid the cliff effect using the autoencoding training procedure in deep learning, and we show that our architecture can perform better than the competition's purely convolutional design over a range of channel quality and bandwidth constraints. In the future, we'd like to study more sophisticated architectures, such as the variational autoencoder design that have shown a lot of promise for compression. We'd also like to study different channels, such as the Rayleigh fading channel, so that we can see if the algorithm performs as expected in different conditions. Lastly, we'd like to see how we can overcome the performance problem with models trained and tested at different channel SNRs as we discussed earlier. Thank you for watching. And if you're interested in finding out more about this project, you can find the report at this link.